The following is distributed by the Berean Call. Dave, as you know, we've been spending a great deal of time in this segment on the gospel, and we're in no hurry to change subjects, for, as the scripture says, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And, of course, that's Romans 1, 16. Today we're starting through the gospel of John, with an emphasis on the verses which will help us better understand the gospel of salvation. As we search these scriptures, I want to keep in mind, Dave, something that you pointed out in An Urgent Call to a Serious Faith. Critical to a true reception of the gospel is, one, knowing who Jesus is, two, knowing who we are, and three, knowing what Jesus accomplished on the cross. So before we begin with verse one, do you have any thoughts related to the overview of John's gospel that might help us in understanding the gospel of John? Well, Tom, I never look at an overview or try to divide Bible books or Mm -hmm. epistles into certain sections and so forth. I'm not critical of those who do, but somehow I just go through it verse by verse and read what it says. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the very first verse presents Jesus as God. Right. And we have... Scriptures in John's Gospel, we have accounts of the life of Jesus and teachings of Jesus that we don't find anywhere else. The famous passage in John 3 with Nicodemus, except a man be born again. None of the other Gospels give that account. We have the woman at the well, and we have some tremendous imagery in this book that you don't have in others. The water that I give will be in him a well of water springing mm-hmm. up into everlasting life. It relates to the very thing we were talking about earlier. This isn't some kind of H2O. This isn't holy water. He's talking about a spiritual reality mm-hmm. that cannot be expressed in some sacramental form. So we have that. I'm the door. I'm the resurrection of life. I'm the true vine. We have some intimate statements from Christ. We have his high priestly prayer, and we have... The declaration, tetastai, in chapter 19, verse 30, I think, somewhere around there, mm-hmm. where Christ says, it is finished. And we have his appearances after the resurrection mm-hmm. to his disciples and breathing upon them, receive ye the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and a little more detail than you have in the other Gospels. And, of course, his appearance at the lake, when Peter says, well, I'm going to go fishing, and the other guys say, yeah, okay, we'll go with you. I guess this Jesus thing, maybe let's not get too excited about. I mean, I'm not judging their hearts and not putting words in their mouths, but it seemed as though they were ready to go back to their old life. That was where Jesus called them. Mm-hmm. And Luke, of course, gives that in detail when Peter says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. And then finally, it says they forsook all, mm-hmm. uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John, and they followed him. And now they've seen the Lord. He's died for their sins. He's resurrected. And now Peter says, well, I guess, guys, we're going to get back to the old profession. (laughs) And that's when Jesus comes and commissions Peter again, feed my sheep. And that's sort of, I guess I gave you a quick overview. Yeah, that's good. I'm also thinking Earlier, we talked about men's opinions, people Mm -hmm. adding things to it, making religion Mm -hmm. up as they go Mm -hmm. along, not thinking that, but certainly in rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. But Jesus makes a very strong point in this gospel. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes Mm -hmm. to the Father Mm -hmm. except by me. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get right after it. Beginning with, this is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Let me add two to that. The same was in the beginning with God. Now this Word. Well, we better go on, Tom. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay. Okay. But I want to go back to the deity of Christ. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that earlier, and Mm -hmm. I want to cover that. In Revelation 19.13, who is this Word? That's what I'm... Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going after here. Revelation 19:13 says, His name is called 
the word of God. This is the one on the white horse who's coming to destroy Antichrist. Right. This is the second coming of Christ. Mm-hmm. So Jesus identifies himself as the word. So there's no mm-hmm. mistaking who John 1, mm-hmm. verses 1 through 3, mm-hmm. are talking about. And when you get to John 8, Jesus says to those Jews who claim they believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples? That was a shock to them. Well, we're following the word of God. Wait a minute, this is the word of God who is speaking to them, and they don't know it. Now, of course, this does present, well, he is the expression of God to man. Mm -hmm. He's the one who makes God visible to man. He came as a man, and he said, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Again, we have this in John's gospel, not anywhere else. So this is God who is revealing himself to and speaking to man. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, who deny that Jesus is God, they love to go to this verse because they have their own translation. It is not a translation. In fact, I can remember 50 years ago reading in the New World Translation where it says, well, this does not follow the ordinary rules of Greek grammar, but this is one place where that rule does not apply. So... The second time, it said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. They say, no, a God, spelled with a little g, because they deny that Jesus is God. Now, all through the Gospels, where it says, those in the boat fell down and worshipped him, a number of times you have people worshipping Jesus, and he accepts that worship. Mm -hmm. The New World Translation, the Jehovah's Witnesses translates it, They did obeisance like you would do to a king. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, it's the same Greek word. What right do you have to change the meaning of it just because you don't believe that Jesus is God? But this is the very same word that is used for worshiping God, and Jesus is accepting this. But when you read it, you either have one God in verse 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. You either have one God or you have two gods, (laughs) one spelled with a big G and the other with a little G, Mm -hmm. well, then how many gods are there? Count the gods. Is there more than one God? No, there's only one God. God in the Old Testament says, I am God. There's none else beside me. Is there a God beside me? God says, wait a minute, I check it out. (laughs) Search the whole universe. There's no other God, okay? All other gods are false gods. So if you've got two gods in here, one of them is God and the other one is Jesus, spelled with a little G, then you have a false god, and Jesus is a false god, but no Jehovah's Witness would want to agree to that. It's very important. Dave, let me jump on that, because Jehovah's Witnesses, they're very religious people. They do Mm. lots of works. I mean, you want to compare them with any other group. Mm -hmm. They, hours-wise, the time they put in, all Mm -hmm. that they go through. Mm -hmm. And here, they just have a little difference of opinion. They think Mm -hmm. that God... Jesus is not Jehovah God, but he's Mm -hmm. a God. What's Mm -hmm. the problem with that? Well, a serious problem, because all through the Old Testament, Jehovah, as they want to call him, or Yahweh, more accurate, says, I am the only Savior. Mm -hmm. Well, then Jesus, to be the Savior, must be God. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That is the eternal Son of God. The government shall be upon his shoulders. So even the rabbis have to acknowledge this is the Messiah. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Now the Jehovah says, well, that's not Almighty God. I give you 37 verses in the Old Testament where Jehovah is called Mighty God. Mighty, Almighty, it doesn't matter. God is God. But then it says, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So the babe born in Bethlehem, who is the son, is also the father. And when Jesus said, I and my father are one, he was right in line with what the prophets had already said. Yeah, but Dave, doesn't that do damage to the Trinity? How can Jesus be the father? Because (laughs) Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. Mm -hmm. Three persons, Mm -hmm. one God. God. Do I understand this? I don't understand it, but I know that philosophically— I know that it's biblical. For example, all through the Old Testament, you have Elohim, a plurality. Mm -hmm. That's God's, literally. We quoted earlier, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Literally, it's God's. In the beginning, Elohim. But then for the plural noun, it uses 
a singular pronoun and a singular verb. Mm -hmm. So you have plurality yet singularity. It is necessary. I guess we've run out of time. Yeah, we're going to. But we can explain why it is necessary. Otherwise, if this God is a single individual before He created any human beings, He's imperfect. He couldn't love, fellowship, and so forth. Yeah. Dave, Isaiah 45, 21 says, And there is no other God besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Hosea 13, 4, For there is no Savior beside me. So if the Jehovah's Witnesses have another God, have a wrong view of Jesus, they're in trouble because they cannot be saved having the wrong God. Furthermore, Jesus was a liar. If he's not God, Mm -hmm. why did they crucify him? Mm -hmm. When Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, Mm -hmm. he didn't say I was. He said, I am. He claims to be Yahweh, the I am of the Old Testament. They took up stones to stone him. Why didn't Jesus say, hey, guys, you're misunderstanding me? In John 10, they took up stones to stone him. Jesus said, I've done many good deeds. For which of these do you stone me? They said, for a good deed we stone thee not, but because thou being a man makest thyself out to be God. That was heresy to them. This was why they crucified him. Jesus claimed to be God. If he isn't, he was a liar. Right. And he's certainly not our Savior. If he isn't God. 